Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online community for people who are curious, want to learn new things and improve themselves in different ways. It includes classes on numerous topics, including guitar playing and music production. Today it's 10 songs that taught me how to play guitar. So, hello and welcome to another video with me, Elmo J. Karjalainen. It's good to have you along. So, what's the point of this video? Well, I'll be sharing with you 10 songs that somehow were important uh, in my development as a guitar player and the key points, really, of those songs, what they helped develop in me or how they helped me and that in turn will hopefully help some of you people out there watching. And I'll start at the beginning, go further along and then come full circle to before the beginning. That's enigmatic. <laughs> okay, so let's start. The first song is something by Gary Moore. It's this one. Yes, it's Shapes of Things by Gary Moore and there was one lick in that solo which made me want to play guitar and it took ages for me to learn how to play it but it really it gave me a goal that was I wanted to be Gary Moore and I've spoken about the importance of setting goals in other videos but this was just my luck that I kind of fell in love with the idea of playing guitar the way Gary Moore did, especially uh, on the live version of this song. And while I've forgotten how to play it, uh, I remember there was a lick there, something like this. And that really caught my attention, that fast thing that he did. Uh, and I was like, wow, can you really play guitar like that? Insane. So that was the first one, Shapes of Things by Gary Moore, and it gave me a goal. Okay, second one, Sunshine of Your Love by the band Cream. This one. This was the first song we ever played as a band, uh, me and my friends, back when we were teenagers, and... Uh, at least all the way through. They had this bit. So what it taught me, apart from having, how you can move this form about and get different major chords. Let's compare the same thing played two different ways. Can you hear the difference to this? The second one sounds very different to the first one. And it's one very simple thing. It's this. It's the vibrato. Now, if you're playing some kind of rock and roll type stuff or blues or something like that, vibrato and bends are essential and I've talked about these in other videos and my guitar teacher Sasha who also happens to be my luthier friend who I've mentioned in other videos he uh, pointed out that I should use vibrato there to liven up the whole thing and he was <laughs> he talked a lot about vibrato and really kind of made me see that it really is important stuff. Vibrato and bends are some of your most important tools as a guitar player, uh, at least if you're playing any kind of lead work as a blues or rock guitar player. Okay, next one. <laughs> And so on. That's Pride and Joy by Stevie Ray Vaughan and I'm not entirely sure if I get, got everything correct there. Some shuffle going on with the right hand. Extremely important. Uh, actually I think I might have learned this 
prior to learning uh, Sunshine of Your Love by Cream, the previous one, but it doesn't matter. Some kind of double stop action and open string stuff. And then the bend. And then of course the whole that thing. And I really like the song. Before we go on, I'd like to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. There's plenty of material there for beginner and intermediate guitarists, such as Music Theory 101 by Henry Olsen, which looks very useful. There's over five hours of material in there, so there should be plenty you can learn, even if you're an intermediate guitarist. Personally, I've been looking at Filmmaking for All, Tell Your Story Through Video by Don Mace to improve the content on this channel and it's very interesting stuff which has given me ideas and food for thought. So there's plenty of stuff there, not just guitar playing. Click the link in the description for a free trial and check out Skillshare. Okay, next up we have something completely different. Now, if you follow the channel, you might be aware that I kind of like Yngwie Malmsteen. And the first thing I learned by Yngwie was this. And so on. That's Dreaming by Ingve Malmsteen, or Dreaming Tell Me by Ingve Malmsteen, J Malmsteen, by the way. And that was, I remember getting that song from my then teacher, we're actually going back a bit here, to work on my right hand picking uh, arpeggios. <laughs> Great song uh, and a really good workout for that kind of stuff, uh, picking stuff. There's loads of tabs on that online, I'm absolutely sure. Next up, I could have picked any one of three songs by the same artist. And the songs are Hey Joe, Voodoo Child Slight Return, or this one. By this point I was slightly more advanced than I'd been in the previous songs. <laughs> it's really just basically one thing. It's these chords. You might remember that I played uh, this, this chord when I did Sunshine of Your Love, but I was doing it as a bar chord, uh, a six string with my uh, index finger. By the time I was doing Purple Haze, which has that famous Hendrix chord, I was playing uh, with my thumb over here, and that's not really, that's not important. But the important thing is that when you play with your thumb over like this, uh, you're not playing the A string. Well, you are, because there's no way, if you're strumming, that you can strum past the A string. But what I do is, I mute it with my thumb and with my ring finger. And, and that's the important thing uh, with uh, this song. Hey Joe taught me other stuff, uh, Voodoo Child Slight Return taught me other stuff. This was this has that muting thing and one of the most important things when you're separating beginners from slightly more advanced guitar players is muting because and muting is a big deal both palm stuff and with this hand next up we have something that i don't even know how to play and i actually never learned how to play it but it's 
an extremely important moment in my development as a guitar player and it's Big Trouble by David Lee Roth, the guitar solo which was played by Steve Vai. I was and still am a huge Steve Vai fan and the solo has a huge truckload of Steve Vai trademark whammy stuff, weird bends, strange note choices, uh, tapping I think some fast picking stuff and this was way before I was kind of prepared to play that stuff because I wasn't technically good enough. Now it might be that uh, for copyright reasons that uh, this video gets blocked and in that case I'll just remove that solo from here and you'll be hearing what I'm saying now. <laughs> but that was the solo and th the thing was that I tried to transcribe it and I never managed to do that. But the great thing is that I kind of got um, a thing for transcribing stuff even though I never managed to learn that. And uh, transcribing stuff has really really helped uh, my sense of pitch, my ear and music enters us through the ears so makes sense to try to improve your ear. This was me trying to do that although I didn't realize I was trying to do that I was just trying to learn Big Trouble and even though I failed uh, I now consider it a very good thing that I did try to learn it that way. Okay next up we have something by Gary Moore again Yes, it's The Loner by Gary Moore. Uh, this was also something I tried to transcribe. Uh, probably one of the first instrumental tunes that I learned from beginning to end. Absolutely brilliant song and it combines... It, you really get to work on your bends and your vibrato when playing this. And I remember making us making a demo version of this uh, with one group, which still bothers me to this day. Which had uh, this bit. <laughs> That bend, or one of those, was, uh, I think it was flat. And that really kind of hammered home again that you need to have your bend sorted out. And also that uh, you need to up your game when you sh you're recording stuff. Because it, it annoyed the living daylights out of me, listening to that. Okay, next up we have something... Uh, we have something. It's this. I actually practiced this so much at one point that my parents absolutely hate that song. They can't stand it anymore. Sorry, Mom! Sorry, Dad! <laughs> it taught me so much control. It kind of unlocked the modes for me somehow because it goes in E minor but then it has a chord in it and I was I've been playing the lead and I been doing kind of practicing the backing because I think I did a demo of this at some point I realized that wait a second this that's some kind back then that's some kind of F E minor doesn't have F in it it has an F sharp what's going on here <laughs> and yeah, it kind of made me think about modes in a new way. And uh, that's one other thing that I think, if you're going to play lead, 
to get the modes sorted. I have the modes in my Guitar Academy, which you can get through Patreon. There's a link in the description to that as well. But For the Love of God, brilliant song, Steve I, brilliant guitar player. Next up, we have something that I actually learned before For the Love of God, and it's this. That's of course by Eddie Van Halen and its eruption. Eddie Van Halen's guitar playing was so brilliant. Uh, why this was, it has nothing to do with tapping, um, although this was what taught me tapping, but tapping isn't very important if you're a guitar player. Some, For some it might be, but for most of us it really isn't. Uh, it's not one of the basics that you need to get right. But it re I really struggled with this. I spent an entire summer doing two things. Uh, one was bouncing a football, or soccer ball if you're American, uh, with both feet, trying to keep it in the air and counting how many touches I could get before I dropped it. I think I got to over a thousand touches. And then this. And I really struggled with it. And I, I just kept at it. Just really with a single-mindedness, determination to actually learn it. And at some point I remember learning it uh, after spending like two months on it. <laughs> My memories of this are a bit hazy, so I can't have spent every day just doing just that half the day. Uh, but that's what it felt like. Uh, and really being really frustrated, but coming back to it. Um, and eventually I did learn it. So eruption, the tapping sequence, that was definitely one thing that a, a milestone in my development as a guitar player. And last but not least we have maybe in a way the most important thing and this is before I even started playing guitar. It was Queen. Any song by Queen that had a guitar solo, you can just pick anyone, let's say uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Back before my, <laughs> what's it called, voice cracked. <laughs> Back in the day when I was just a little boy and my voice was high pitched like this, I uh, sang Queen songs from beginning to end and also sang the guitar solos. So I definitely had some interest in guitar. And it's still something that I think is import can be important to do, or a good thing to do. I'm not saying you need to go out and sing Queen solos, especially not in public if you're uncomfortable singing, but singing what you play is a great way to improve your ear as well. So let's say you have something like this. You play that. Then you try to sing it. Da 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 da. And doing stuff like that, playing a phrase, singing it, or singing a phrase and trying to play it, uh, great stuff for your ears. And I was kind of doing that even before I was playing. I was just playing, I was just singing Brian May's phrases, not my own. And I think it's helped my ear a lot even before I started playing guitar. And you don't have to do, do this if you don't want to, but you can, you can hum along to guitar solos it can be a difficult thing and it will help your sense of pitch, I'm sure of it. Or you can do what I did just there, uh, play phrases, repeat them by singing them. And the idea is not that you have to sound good when you sing, just that you try to hit the right notes. If you want to watch more of my lesson videos, there is a playlist here. There is also a playlist with my music. Please check that out. If you want all of my music, access to all of my lessons and exclusives, check out my Patreon. There is a link in the description. You can even take that stuff for free if you want to. Click like if you liked the video. I hope you did. Comment, let me know which, which songs have you learned from. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell notification thing. But above all, I hope you have a nice day. Take care and see you in another one. Bye!